Hello everyone, welcome to Ignite, where we connect, grow, and inspire. As you prepare to listen to the sermon today, I pray that you are blessed. Let's get started. Hello everybody, welcome to Mount Zion Ignite. And um, I, want to, I want to first and foremost say hello to all you, our friends, our family, our community out there. And um, I want to bring it back to the panel to say hello to our panel. Um, I'm sure you guys are missing church. I'm missing church too because uh, the hug, the high five, the shakes, and everything. Now we know the value of those stuffs, um, but but it's all good. I was telling a friend uh, a few days ago about the implication of the church being locked down, and I said um, the church is really not locked down um, because we are the church. We can't be locked down. Um, what is locked down is the building. And, and as far as I'm concerned, one of the greatest gains that we all have in this whole um, event is, or in this whole experience, is the opportunity to be more connected to God, to more connected to our families. And that, I think, is pretty much the most important thing in our lives. Um, let, me, let me quickly read the scripture in Romans 8, 38 to 39. It says, and I'm convinced, that's supposed to put speaking, that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in, in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, uh, and, and that scripture. Is, uh, is 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 justifying my main point about the fact that we can't be locked up. Nothing can separate us from God. You know, staying at home does not separate us from God. It should never separate you from God. Um, and I know that very soon we'll all be coming back. So let me bring it back to our panel. Panel, welcome, and I'm so glad to have you guys. Um, I'm going to introduce you to our audience one after the other. And um, all I just wanted to say is hello to them. And it's going to be fun. This is, um, I call this the COVID-19 panel talk um, from Mount Zion Ignite. Um, the objective of this meeting is just to encourage and to bring hope to all you, our family members. Um, just to let you know that um, God is still the same. Um, the situation might change, but God remains the same and you can still count on him. He's still a faithful God. And uh, we are not connected from you spiritually because we are always praying for you. Um, of course, the first person that I'm going to be introducing is uh, uh, one of our, everybody here is a, is a family member, so you're not going to be seeing any stranger. I promise you that. I have Dr. Chuko Ojiba. Um, he's a bus certif certified in family medicine, and he works with Eagles Landing Family Practice in Stockbridge, Georgia. Dr. Chuko, nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. God bless you, sir. And um, I have my spiritual father and a spiritual head at Mount Zion. And uh, that's no other person but uh, Pastor Antonio Dugua. Daddy, welcome to this platform. Thank you, sir. And hello, everyone. God bless you. Amen. And also, I have another very um, important person in our miss here who is also a member of the family. Um, and that is no other person but um, Dr. Abiodun Famakiwa, who is an adjunct professor of Morehouse School of Medicine, and is also both certified in adult psychiatrist. Um, I just want to welcome you, Dr. Famaki. Welcome to the panel. No, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, sir. So I, I, and I really I, I want <laughs> to appreciate you guys on behalf of Mount Zion Ignite for um, coming to add value to our, our people today. Uh, I can assure you that um, nobody's going to be the same again after this panel because of the level of information that we are going to be getting from here. Um, Dr. Ochuko, I just want to quickly um, show this to you first. Um, when people are tested positive um, and they go into quarantine, is this, uh, the whole quarantine thing, I've been getting questions from people about it. Is it that just merely going into quarantine kills you or takes the virus <laughs> or even while you are quarantined, do you have to do certain things? I don't know. Can you just enlighten us a little bit? Yes. Uh, so uh, COVID-19 is the name of this virus that we're battling now. Uh, uh, 
coronavirus disease. That's the acronym, COVID-19. Now, it's, it's, a, it's a novel virus. Novel means new, unknown, different from everything else. There have been other types of coronaviruses over the years, affecting animals, affecting human beings. Now, this particular one is believed to have skipped from animals to human beings and now being transmitted from humans to humans and rapidly. And that's the concern about it. it, it it's, it's new. The methods to treat it are not known. So it causes a lot of damage just because of that. Um, it, it, now, the, 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 the downside is that it's highly infectious. The positive is that the mortality rate is not as high as some other diseases. So that's, that's a small positive to take from it. That's a good, now, that, that's a good news for us then. Somewhat, somewhat. If you, if you can take anything positive, you want to look at positives as well, or else you'll be you know, downcast all the time. So now, when a person is uh, infected, or and <coughs> you do it, sometimes you, you, it depends on uh, the, uh, the current criteria for testing. Because that, based on the criteria, it might actually it might not be recommended that you do any testing for the patient just based on certain different criteria. I think over time we'll go over it. Um, <clears throat> if you are found to be positive, depend, you now move over to the severity of illness to make a decision on what next to do. If your illness is mild and it's uh, not causing you a lot of distress, the recommendations are to be quarantined in place. Now, quarantine means separating yourself, essentially. And you do that to reduce the spread of the illness. Now, during quarantine, you're, you're essentially advised to isolate as much as you can from other people. Now, in some, in some cases, it's pretty easy. You live alone, you stay alone. Don't try, try to avoid going out as much as you can get other people to do your shopping and everything else. Now, in some other cases, it's more difficult. Some folks live with their families. So yeah. you try to separate yourself as much as you can within that home from the rest of your family and take other precautions to prevent or reduce the uh, risk of you know, spreading the disease. Now, it's expected that during quarantine, you, your body essentially fights off the illness if it's mild enough, and you recover from that infection. So they expect the incubation period. Okay, we're going into medicine now. Incubation period means time between the time it contracted the virus and the time it manifests. Okay. So if you have picked up the virus a few days ago, I look at you, you are totally asymptomatic, and there's no way I can tell. Now, in a few more days, you start having the cough, the fever, the difficulty breathing. You have now manifested it. So that period is called an incubation period. Now, for the coronavirus, uh, the expected incubation period is between two days to 14 days. Okay. So that's two weeks maximum. So they're expecting you, the expectation is that your body should have either manifested or you should have got over the symptoms of that manifestation at the end of two weeks. Without using, <laughs> without using anything? Um, without using drugs? Yes, yes. Oh. You can, you can fight, yes. Some oh. folks are even asymptomatic, have absolutely no symptom. Their oh. body is able to suppress the effect of the virus. Okay. Their immune system is so healthy that it suppresses the effect of the virus and they don't manifest with all these other uh, expected symptoms I would expect to find. Okay. Um, now, now, there's a caveat here. If they'll tell you quarantine is two weeks or till your symptoms have stopped. Okay. So in some people, they might end up manifesting those symptoms for even longer than two weeks. So your quarantine extends up till all your symptoms are gone. So that, that, they're expecting you to, to, to come out of quarantine with a reduced chance of spreading the disease when you go into the general public. Okay. 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 That's, that's, that's wholesome. And I'm, I'm, I, because I was, a lot of time when we talk about quarantine, it's people don't usually 
talk about what you, your the experiences are within that period. And I'm so happy that you were able to highlight that, that the, you know, the medical reason why that quarantine is necessary, apart from the social, not transferring it, it's also a period which, I mean, I, I think that uh, makes, makes a lot of sense. One of my greatest concerns in this period is how much this is playing in people's psychology, people's mentality, um, how this is mentally affecting people. And, and that brings me to pastor, um, I said pastor, you know, I think Dr. Famakiwa is about to be ordained as a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm to Dr. Famakiwa, let me ask you this. Um, how has <coughs> this crisis really affected mental health of people? Uh, uh, thank you for the question. It has affected the mental health of uh, people in numerous ways. There are some people who have underlying mental illness. Some people don't have any illnesses at all. And with some people who don't have any illnesses, uh, uh, um, it has affected them physically, it, it affected them emotionally, and then mentally. You know, when I say mentally, it, it takes different form. Physically, um, remember uh, uh, the doctor earlier talked about <clears throat> how it affects them, the body aches, the fever, the, the worriness, the, uh, the lethargy, that, that, that weighs a lot on, on the psychic of uh, any individual. And then uh, emotionally, uh, remember if you're quarantined, it's like being in a prison, a locked prison. It just happens to be your house. Okay? You are unable to go out. You are unable to do the things you used to do. Some people, their family members will die. They are unable to visit them. So it affects them um, uh, emotionally in that way. It also affects them uh, financially. When, when, when they are quarantined, there are some people live on an hourly basis. They are unable to, to go to work, so their income decreases, they, and that leads to what you call anticipatory anxiety. Mm -hmm. Anticipatory anxiety, what it means by that is that some people, remember when the doctor earlier was talking about when you contact it, you don't show symptoms, you are quarantined. <clears throat> that period of time when you are quarantined, you are waiting for, okay, am I going to have the illness? Mm -hmm. Am I going to have the severity of the illness? Is my body going to take care of it? So that anticipatory anxiety is enough in some people to weigh some people down <clears throat> in situations like that. And this doesn't uh, uh, matter your educational background because I've found some doctors colleagues who have called me both from far and abroad and I've talked about this a lot. Uh, because some of them know I'm a psychiatrist, they just say, please be able to talk to me. Because some, some even we, uh, uh, we come back from work after treating coronavirus patients, you know, they have to wear the PPE, they, wear, they have to wear all those things. Now they come back home and they just break down and cry. That's, those are doctors, and I'm talking of doctors who are strong in mind and all those things, but they are overwhelmed with what they've seen, the severity of it, the, um, the, the, uh, the amount of people they're seeing and how they have to take care of those people and the feeling of helplessness. Mm. And, and, and some of these healthcare providers, mentally, is affecting people. Uh, remember, I told you some people with background of uh, mental illness, well, just anxiety, PTSD, agoraphobia, obsessive compulsive disorder. You can imagine somebody who has obsessive compulsive disorder and is germophobic. At this time of coronavirus, that everybody has to wear face masks, mm. they are incapacitated in situations like that. That all these things increases, it's magnified in all, in all of them. And um, it affects the mental health of healthcare providers more than uh, many people might think about, and even the society as a whole. Uh, I was listening to, um, just coming um, home from work just now, there's a nurse who, who was talking on the NPR around that his friend committed suicide because she just couldn't cope with it. Mm. In, a, in a local hospital here, we mentioned the hospital, one of the uh, colleague of mine had to, uh, was calling me. One of the nurses had to be taken on emergency and admitted in voluntary committee psychiatric facility because she was threatening to kill herself at wow. work. That's how severe it, it is. So this thing is affecting them physically. Mm -hmm. uh, to cut the story short, mm -hmm. affecting them physically, emotionally, and uh, mentally, and it's overwhelming that. Um, it can affect anybody, no matter your profession, no matter where you are, no matter your educational, uh, economical background, it affects uh, everybody. 
That's I, I, I'm able to answer some of your questions. Yeah, yeah, you did, you did, you did also, Doctor Farmakewa, yeah. and and yeah. that is one part of the concern that people are not really looking at. Um, I I wonder how so many people will need to actually re, reprogram their mind after now um, because there's something about fear. It could linger on even after the entire, even after whatever it is that you're afraid Absolutely. of. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and so that psychological part is a big concern for me. And, and to a very large extent, too, um, the church also plays a lot of roles, uh, which, which, you know, makes me to bring in um, our spiritual leader, Pastor Antonio Dugua, um, conversation. Um, first of all, let me, let me say something, sir. Um, is this, um, as some people started initially, some people came up with the fear that maybe God is judging us. Are we, is God judging us? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, is God judging us? Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> um, I want to say that uh, from the records we have in the Bible, uh, God had given out punishment to people in the past who disobeyed him. Uh, the children of Israel, uh, in the days of old, when they disobeyed in the wilderness, yeah. God sent uh, poisonous snakes to bite them. We also know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, God also allowed fire and brimstone to destroy them. But in Luke chapter 13, verses 2 to 5, which I'm going to read now, uh, Jesus said, do you think those Galileans were worse sinners than all the other people from Galilee? Jesus asked, is that why they suffered? Not at all. And you will perish too, unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And what about the 18 people who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them? Were they the worst sinners in Jerusalem? No. And I tell you again that unless you repent, you will perish too. Why are we then in this situation? People have given different forms of theories. Uh, maybe it is uh, one form of internet. It was uh, world conspiracy. Uh, but only God knows. I don't know. But one thing I'm sure of is in Psalm 91 verse 1. And that is a promise from the word of God. And it says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So, Instead of bothering ourselves and also, you know, taking cue from uh, Dr. Fama Kinwa, who talks about uh, the psychology of what is happening now, let us rest in God, continue to live as God's children, and knowing that as this thing came, it will soon go and will be protected by God. Amen. Well said, sir. Thank well you. Said. <laughs> and and, and but, but let, me, let me ask you before. I, I turn the table to Dr. Chuku. What is the biggest lesson that we believers should learn from this, if, if any? Okay. Well, the, one of the lessons I want to mention is the fact that trials are not always a sign of God's punishment. Mm -hmm. uh, just like what we saw in the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It is not because of their sins that God allowed them to pass through fire. Mm -hmm. Also, we need to worship God in our times. And in moments like this, we should not forget our integrity as children of God. Amen. And even in this moment, when you doubt everything around you, government, uh, medical professionals, don't doubt God. Know that in all these things, God will help you. And I want to quickly also say this, that... Uh, we talk about superpowers in the world and middle powers and developing nations. In a time like this, God has shown us that he's the ultimate owner of power Amen. and knowledge. And also, God is teaching us that we should be humble in times like this. We should trust the Lord. We should live in community. Don't isolate yourself. Because that is when this psychology that doctor uh, talked about can take over your life and squeeze life out of you. Just like doctor said, some people, even professionals, colleagues are calling him just for help. Seek help and let God use people around you to help you. Amen. 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 Well said. Um, <laughs> let, let, let me ask you, Dr. Dr. Farmer Kinwa, quickly. I mean, just in line with what Pastor said. I mean, as a, as a medical doctor and a, and a person of faith, do you, do you accept to the fact that 
faith plays a big role in our mental health in any way. Is there, is, is there, is there any connection with our faith helps in a time like this? Oh, thank you. Faith in itself, to, hold, to have something to hold on to is very powerful. <clears throat> in some situations, we read in our book that some of the protective factors for people who are committing suicide, religion plays a, uh, is one of them. Religion, having family members around you is a, <clears throat> as a good support system. Yes, they are all protective. When, and when you have this faith, is to harness it when you are in trouble. When I mean trouble, when you are in crisis. Yeah. Because some people, when they're in crisis, they, they sort of lose their faith. Everything is out of the window. Mm. Okay. Uh, I said it because I was evaluating a, a, a patient in another hospital. And then I was, uh, when I get to the educational background, and what it, um, she does, she told me she's a pastor. And then she, she, she looked at me and, and, she, and she said, yes. He said, can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to ask her, I said, no, because uh, she's a pastor, uh, I told her that I go to church. I, I closed my, I, I dropped my pen at that point. I said, what does the Bible say about people committing suicide? Uh -huh. Then she looked at me and I said, everything went out of the window, that she was too overwhelmed, that everybody comes to her, there's nobody she can talk to, because mm. everybody believes she's strong enough, and she's taking everything in. And then when the crisis comes to her, there's nobody to help her out. And uh, I have to let her know that, yes, the Bible is there, that that is the time that your faith should be stronger, yeah. and do talk to people also. Yeah, also. Awesome. Okay? Because the fact you are a pastor, call another pastor friend. Do all those things. And uh, when I started talking, that's when she started shaking her head. Say, I was never thinking at that, at that time. Faith, faith does play a very big role. It plays a very big role. It's a good support system for it many is. people. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. I, I, and I, I, did, I did a post. I did a post this morning on Twitter. And I said, you know, Sometimes your faith might deteriorate as your circumstances deteriorate. Um, but, but the truth of the matter is, just like Dr. Farmer Kenwa said, one of the best times to exercise your faith is when situations are bad. And there's no better time. You know? So um, we, we just want to encourage uh, people and our community that, look, this is the time. The, the greatest thing you should do with your fear is to point it to your faith. You understand? So fear by itself has a very deadly endpoint. You know, it's part of the fear that leads to the anxiety of mental health issues and all that. But every time you fear, um, we're not here trying to say that people should not have fear. Sometimes fear is just a normal response to uncertainty and things you are not sure of. But even when you fear, what do you do with the fear? And that's why we always encourage, point your fear to your faith. You know, Get God in charge of that fear. Um, somebody said it in a very nice way. He said, when fear knocks on the door, send faith to open it. Yes. Uh, these, are, these, are, these are incredible ways we can. Um, Dr. Chuko, uh, coming back to this whole COVID-19 thing, there, there is this um, trend of certain people being tested positive and they went into the quarantine and you know went through the process and they became negative and after a while they come back to positive so my question is does um, the virus resurrect is <laughs> in the life of people what is going on <laughs> well, there are different theories behind all of this now if you the cdc is our main resource in the united states for information okay proper information not hearsay not not on proven facts, they, they try and stick to facts. Mm -hmm. And if you re go through their, their write-ups, they always talk about the fact that this is a novel virus. It is new, it is unknown, poorly, not fully understood. So there are certain things that you, 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 uh, you see on a case-by-case -case basis and you, you just can't draw a general conclusion just by looking at them case-by-case. You need to do studies, look at the numbers, see trends, 
mm. they make conclusions. That's scientific. Um, now, as far as testing patients is concerned, you test positive, you go to quarantine, they repeat the test, you know, you're admitted in the hospital, you, 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 they repeat the testing, it's all negative, you are doing better, and they send you home. Now, reinfection is possible, but it's not, uh, it's not proven. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not a standard uh, uh, thing yet. Okay. They don't fully understand why it happens in some people. But has it happened? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, there are a few cases that have heard of that have happened. Uh, now, getting out of quarantine and testing negative, it is still assumed that you are unable to spread the virus at that time. Okay. 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 How, and your body should have gone through the process of making antibodies to this virus. Okay. Okay, so it's assumed that you are more resistant. But reinfection is possible. Even with the flu, we have cases of people who, who come in twice a year for the flu. After getting it over it the first time, they come again. Oh, you had the flu. There's no need to test it for the flu. But I feel the same like the last time. We test, it's the flu. Mm -hmm. So it is possible. It is possible. The explanations, we really can't tell of now, as of now. And, and the... the, the, the the, the, the number of occurrences of this kind of cases, we really don't know. The numbers will tell a lot of time. And, and coming back to the, uh, to the basis of, of, of this disease in the US, back home in Nigeria and around the world, one thing is key, adequate number of testing. If you don't, if you don't test, you don't know the numbers. You don't know whether the disease is trending, whether it's getting better, whether all these uh, stay in shelter in place ordinances are working. You don't know. So it comes back to testing. So if the testing numbers are not adequate for the size of your population, it is difficult to draw conclusions. It is difficult to make uh, scientific deductions and <laughs> predict how this disease will uh, go. So testing is, is what matters. And if you notice, the US government is pushing a lot of efforts to make sure that manufacturers bring out testing in large numbers so that there's no more uh, cases of walking into your doctor's office, you tell him your, your symptoms, and he says, oh no, unfortunately we can't test you because we need to save the test for the <laughs> old lady with a COPD or cancer or something that's gonna walk in. <clears throat> so until everybody is tested without limits, before you start getting to know, get more information about this virus. Oh, but, but I hear, talking about testing, um, somebody told me that if you do not manifest symptoms, you don't have to go to test. Uh, do, you, do you agree with that position? Um, it's, it's um, if you, <coughs> excuse me, um, the, it's, it's, it's a changing uh, field. Let me put it that way. Okay. Um, if you go to the CDC, CDC says you should refer to your local health authorities when it comes to criteria or protocol for testing. Okay. Now, if you now come to Georgia, initially when this started, it was not everybody needs to be tested. Okay. If you don't have symptoms, you don't need to be tested. If you have mild symptoms, that's the main, the main three symptoms are fever, dry cough, and difficulty breathing. If you have those symptoms and your symptoms are mild, at that time, you still didn't need to be tested. The recommendation was to go home, quarantine for two weeks and get over this. Mm. If you now came in with mild symptoms and you had major risk factors, I, remember, I think I remember some of them, being older than 65, mm. um, having an uh, immunocompromised system like in people with HIV, bone marrow transplant or cancers. Um, um, having chronic illnesses like moderate to severe asthma, COPD, diabetes, having kidney or liver failure, all those things will increase your chances of having a severe illness. So even if you came in with mild symptoms, you had those uh, 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 risk factors in your history, <coughs> recommend that you test. Okay. Okay. And, and then based on what we find, your, your treatment also differs. Now, if your symptoms were severe all the way, of course, you had 
high fevers, you had dry cough, you had difficulty breathing, and you were very sick, and you had no other risk factors, and you have been exposed to, to someone with uh, COVID, of course, you test. So does the, even up to now, this, this, this criteria are changing mm -hmm. as the test becomes more readily available. Uh, um, yeah. Well, testing is the first way to know if you have it. You are infected. Yes. So it boils down to testing again. And I think as more commercially available testing resources are coming into play now, mm. that won't be a question. It will be a question to be if you have any symptoms, if you have symptoms, or you, if, you are, if you have had exposure or something, we can test you at that time. And that's, that gives us better numbers and better prediction of your outcome. So. If, somebody, if somebody who is listening to you now here in Georgia, says, where can I get the test? I, I'm, I'm coordinating this panel. I don't even have an idea. I don't yes. know where to get tested. Uh, what, do you have any, any suggestion or any advice to that? Um, <clears throat> the main suggestion right now is to call your primary care provider, your okay. doctor. Okay. Call your doctor. And as of this afternoon, there's a new um, set of tests that is out that actually it takes only about 15 minutes to, to run and get results. Wow. Start, the, the other tests that have been out since the beginning of this illness in the US take days. There's a backlog of 100 and something thousand tests from some of, in some of these labs. And so the wait time was you know, tremendous. Some, some days, some, some four to five days, or even a week of waiting. But now more commercially available tests have become, uh, come into play. Now, the first thing, of course, is always call your provider, okay? Mm -hmm. As to tell them, see, I have these symptoms. I've been exposed to this person for this long. I'm worried. Do I need to be tested? Based on what your provider uh, recommends, then you move forward. Sometimes they say, okay, I look through your history. You're a high-risk case. I want you to be tested as soon as possible. Or sometimes they say, oh, no, you're a very healthy young person. There's no other symptom that you have apart from this shelter in place and, you know, ride it out and call me if things get worse. Okay. Um, now, the, 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 the other drive to testing facilities run by the government uh, that are available, now the, the criteria for doing that is there's a 1-800 number you call, which your provider should have as well. Okay. So you can opt to use those kind of facilities to do your testing as well. Okay. Those are avenues for you. Awesome. That's, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, you, you, you know, one of the things that I'm bothered about, and, I'm sh and I know Dr. Fama Kinwa touched a little bit on it um, uh, from the previous question, and I want to take it back to Dr. Fama Kinwa. So many people have lost their job. Um, so many people right now will almost not be the same again after post-coronavirus. Post um, as a mental health professional, um, you know the implication of that to, to their psychology, their, 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 their minds and all that. Uh, what, what would you have to say? How do they need to cope with that new condition without going into depression? Uh, it's, it's difficult to tell people when they are done that things will get better because there are some people don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. Um, when, um, like uh, I was listening to NPL this morning, they were saying that even the economy of the country will take some years to recover from situations like this. So you can talk about individual, how are they going to recover from this? Some people who have lost their job, they are, they are under severe psychological stress, okay? And then when they are under the psychological stress, some get to the feeling, uh, to the point of helplessness, okay? They, they, um, but things uh, might be difficult, uh, but it's not, but it's, it's not the end of the world. That's what we need to tell some of these people, some of those people who we see that, and who is willing to, to listen at that particular time. And, and it depends on where you meet them, okay? Mm -hmm. Some people are in the early stages. They're just worry, excessive worry feeling, and all those things. Some people are, are having this idea of what, what, what is going to happen to them. I have family, I have my wife, I have my children, I don't have any income, my business is gone down. What's going to happen to me? The money coming from the government is, is not enough to take care of even the house bill, talk less of talking um, uh, the rent, talking of what they're going to eat. So it creates a, a lot of uh, 
uh, psychological stress on them and it, uh, um, and it affects them that some people or we try to uh, make them uh, be aware of some things that could happen because some of them this engage in this loop of helplessness okay mm. it's like a loop once they are in that loop of thinking they, they only think of the negative things mm. i don't have money i can't pay my bill what what's going to happen to me what's going to happen to my children um, my family i'm sick so it keeps running and running and they can't get out of it so uh, we uh, encourage them to engage in diversional activities mm. that we take their mind off these things. What an example. Stop watching, <clears throat> stop watching excessive news on CNN, uh, Fox, and all those things. Some negative, some positive, well, most of them negative. Get yourself uh, something to do. Engage yourself in some activities. If Amen. you can read a book, read a book. Amen. This might be the, like some people, you might tell them, um, some people, when they are admitted to hospital, I usually tell them, I said, but when they say, oh, I don't belong, I said, why not go make good use of a bad situation? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Try to get something you might, uh, there might be some interest you, you like to do. Create that interest. Mm -hmm. Some people, they like knitting. If you have something, knit it. If you engage in books, come closer to your family in situations like that. That's right. Well, and uh, I was telling some people. I said, in nine months we are going to be increase uh, baby boom. And then the next, the <laughs> next thing I, they call them. The next thing my the next thing my pediatric friend told me he said, oh, they are going to keep me busy. And my <laughs> my OBGYN doctor said, I hope ten percent. Usually ten percent is the serious section. That's money for me. <laughs> 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 it was that just making light of it. What? What? Yeah. We, uh, we try to tell them get diversion activities yeah. or to cope with um, and engage in things you used to enjoy before yeah. that the work has yeah. taken away from you. Wow. Try to try to bring those things back and focus wow. attention on the positive things and don't look at the hopeless situation you are right now. Wow. Things can get better. Wow, Doctor Mamaki, why you do a lot of pastoral job? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a funny thing you know even though medicine sometimes will not want to acknowledge that truth but yeah. almost everything you are saying is scriptural mm -hmm. and that's the that was the you know i tell i tell people that's the main essence of the church mm -hmm. the church is a support group mm -hmm. uh, the church is not so much as important as your personal relationship with god mm -hmm. the main reason why the church is created is that jesus wants people of the kingdom is children to mingle together and do life together. And, 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 and I like the fact that you, you discouraged idleness. Um, that is one key point and I, I don't want to, I don't want it to escape. I want to talk about it a little bit. You know, this exactly, this is in line with what I tell uh, our members in church. I usually say, and everybody is familiar with that, that if you are not earning, you should be learning. You know, if, if the honey stops, you just lost your job. You're not making money. Then if you are not honey, you should be learning. Because eventually you need to learn. Because the more you learn, the more you earn. Um, a lot of people from past experiences, after a big challenge like this comes opportunities. So we are going to, we are going to grow through this crisis. We're just not going to go through it. Um, going through it like normal people and just being there is different from growing through it. Growing through it is coming out better at the other side of this crisis. And this, I usually, you know, counsel people um, and talk to people about this in light of the scripture. And as you were speaking, I was just saying to myself, Dr. Famakiwa, no wonder I introduced you as Pastor Famakiwa. Dr. Famakiwa is just preaching right now because everything you are saying is in line with what we, we, tell, we tell our people in church. Um, you can't be idle. The devil makes the best use of your idleness. That's when the suicidal thoughts and then so many, you know, you know, self pity um, party or whatever you call it will be <laughs> happen around you. Uh, pity because, party. because you're a pity party, because you are just alone. You have to do life with people. You had a, you had a doctor from a medical profession is saying it that you cannot try to avoid just being all by yourself thinking. 
Do something positive out of your situation. Ask yourself that if there's anything that I will come out as a gain from this event, what will it be? Oh, I'm, I'm not closer to God. I'm not closer to my family. Oh, I finally got time to play my best sport or something. And I, I pray that we'll be learning as best as possible here. Now, every time we pray in our community, we try to pray for people that I call the heroes of this whole corona thing. And the first people we usually talk about are the medical practitioners. They are, we call them the, the people in the front of the battle. You know, they, are the, they are the ones that are facing um, the crisis the most. There's a, there's a particular set of people, and, and don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not, say, I'm not being sentimental because I'm, I'm a man of, a person of faith. All of us are people of faith. So um, we are undermine the value that the church is playing in this whole crisis. And, and that's why I'm going to turn the table to, to my pastor. Um, pastor, just, give, just run us a little bit. Um, I know being part of you know, the, the team out there at Mount Zion, I know a lot of things that you are put in place and um, with the team. And let, let everybody listening just have a little idea of what the church is doing to support. So, so if you are out there listening to us, and you think you need the help of the church, and you think the church is not saying so much, it's because you are not really uh, paying attention. I hope that I will give you this opportunity. Uh, Pastor, I'll hand that over to you. What's the church doing to help people in this time? Thank you, sir. Uh, now the church is out to help the church community, both physically and spiritually. And this is why I said earlier on that we must live in community. This is a time that no one should isolate themselves from the church community. And I want to believe that everyone uh, or most of the people listening to us belong to a connect group. They, they belong to the dream, uh, dream team. They have friends in church. This is a time you need to call on someone to lean on. No one can go through this alone, just like we have heard from our doctors. And also, uh, I want to say that this is also a time uh, for us to pray together. Uh, uh, with God, all things are possible. The doctors are trying, they've told us, but we know that God has the ultimate solution to this problem. So if the problem comes upon the whole world, why will you kill yourself? You are just one in billions. So just put your trust in God and depend on him. And so we are here to support you spiritually, we are here to encourage you. Uh, we have leaders in the church. We have teams in the church that are there for you. All we need to know from you is what are your needs. If you don't speak out, we don't know what you are going through, both physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually. You know one pastor. You know one leader. Just call on anyone. Call on your team leader. Call on your HOD. Call on someone that you know you can actually tell your trouble to. And they will pray with you. Wherever there is physical need that needs to be met, the church will look into it. If it is financial, maybe you can't pay your rent, you can't pay your utilities, the church is there also to support. Just let us know. We are here waiting for you. And if also you want to also be a source of blessing, uh, maybe God has blessed you, you are not even having any problem in this season, uh, Thank God, it is not only a coronavirus that is the problem, but the after effect of people losing their jobs, uh, not being able to earn any income is the biggest problem in this season. So if you want to help in any way, you can also reach out to the pastor and uh, we'll be here uh, to collaborate together to make sure that no one in our church community suffers. Amen. 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 What, what affects you as a member of the body of Christ, also affects the entire body. Um, so we, we don't want you to go through life. Don't do life alone. Um, it has never been the case. The, the more main essence of the church is for us to have a community of believers holding hands and you know, going through the pains and the challenges of life together. Um, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm also trained as a counselor and um, I'm also a member of the American Association of Christian Counselors. So um, feel free 
um, sometimes if you just want to talk, uh, let's talk. Um, and thank God for uh, Dr. Fama Kinwa, who is also here, um, who can really answer your questions if you started feeling that you are, if you're feeling that you're almost losing your mind. Um, there's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to, to, to hide. You don't die in silence. If you just think you're losing your mind right now, you just can't help yourself anymore. Um, I'm sure that if you reach out to us in church, the church is so blessed with resources. Everybody on this panel had church members. It's a family. Um, I, can't, I can't emphasize how much we can do for each other. But please, just like Pastor said, do not be quiet about your situation. Don't be shy. Uh, don't, be, don't feel ashamed. Stuff happens to everybody. If you need the help of the church in any way, you heard it from, from that senior pastor, spiritually, materially, just reach out to us. Um, we're going to make sure that we display some numbers at the end of this um, panel talk and that you can call. And I, pray, I believe that God will um, use the church to add value as it has always done. And, 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 and if you feel blessed to also um, call into the church and say, um, if there's anybody, I'm an employer of labor, um, I can still hire someone. If people um, are looking for a job, let me know. Or, or I want to make certain donations to the homes that the church is setting aside um, to support people. You can also reach out to the church and make contribution to that fund. And we can assure you that it will be used for that purpose. Um, I pray that um, God will help us. And I am so excited about this panel. And I want to try as best as possible to make sure that uh, we squeeze something out of these our professionals before we let them go today. You know, so I, I, I want to quickly ask you something, Dr. Chuko, before I let you um, off. Um, just for the for the sake of people that keep pets, uh, is there any kind of transfer between pets and human? No, there's none. No. Ah, okay, that's fine. You heard it. None recognized so far. Okay. Um, as always, with time, there's a possibility that things can change. Okay. None so far. Okay, that's fine. And, and, and more like on a closing note, what will be your one good advice you want to give to people out there about this whole COVID-19? Um, are, we, are we almost there? Are we going to be back to our normal life very soon? I'm asking on behalf of someone who is watching and wish they can ask you that. Are we going to be back soon? Well, it, it's, it's difficult to say from, for now. Uh, you know, like the pastor said, everything that has a beginning will have an end. As it comes, it will go one day. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's all about our ability to manage this problem, both as medical professionals, both as human beings, because this affects the whole human race. Mm. We have to understand our shortcomings as a human race. We have to try and build from whatever lessons we learn from this. Um, it's an infection. It's going through the population. And the reason why it's so dangerous is because you don't have the treatment for it. You don't have the prevention for it. And I think those are in the pipeline. Those will definitely come eventually. People are working real hard 24-7 behind the clock to get us these uh, treatments and, and prevention immunizations. So there will be a time where this will, based on all our efforts, both the, uh, the government trying to keep us in place, keep us uh, social distance or us and, and good hygiene practices and all that. There'll be a time where all this work will bear fruit and we mm -hmm. can see the numbers of the virus will decline. Mm -hmm. Just as it is doing in China now, it will decline and it will, it will ebb out. Um, but even at that, uh, at that time, other questions will arise. How do we rebuild economy, jobs, and all of that. And how do we ensure that this doesn't happen again? Mm. Uh, so those are things that we, there will always be challenges ahead of us. But with every challenge, there are lessons to be learned. Uh, there, 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 there are things to build upon and become better people. Mm. So Amen. that's what I think. Amen. Amen. Well, that's, that's so well said. What, 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 do you, what would you want to say 
Um, there's a group of people that, I mean, I've always loved our medical practitioners and healthcare workers, but my appreciation of this group of people is right now gone off the hook. I mean, I just, I just love and appreciate all the medical people. Um, you are one of them, and, and Dr. Ochuko, I just want to ask you to look straight into the camera and just send encouragement to some of them out there um, that are like you, and they are, they are worried um, for their own health and not to transfer to their children. What kind of you know, encouragement can you give to them as a practitioner yourself? Yes. So, so uh, friends, colleagues, fellow Christians, it's important that at this time we, uh, we remain strong, we remember our training, we remember our faith, and uh, we have to know who stands behind us, who, who, who leads our hands, who gives us strength, and it's God. Um, there'll be time when you'll be down, when you feel overwhelmed. But remember, God puts you in whatever position you are at this time in life to help, to help those around you, to motivate others around you. Um, it's also important that you remember that we are all human beings at the end of the day. We have pressures on our minds. We have worries about our family and friends, our parents who are old, children who are young. Um, but through it all, it's important that you seek help when you feel overwhelmed. Um, the pastor have talked about it. Your church is there. Your faith is there to keep you going. My fellow doctors talked about it. My psychiatrist has talked about it and said that you can reach out and use these resources without fear or shame and know that uh, there's always help for you around the corner. So reach out, keep working, keep helping people. It is what we're placed on this earth to do. And uh, I believe God willing, this will pass. Amen. God bless you and all the other medical practitioners. Um, Dr. Fama Kinwa, I want you to just take that home for us um, as you also put out a word of encouragement for the professionals and for people in general in this time. Um, what will you say, sir? Uh, thank you. Uh, we, uh, uh, thank you for all the uh, frontline workers, the doctors, the nurses, the air care technicians, the respiratory therapists, uh, uh, the housekeepers of all the hospitals, uh, I want to thank you for what you are doing. It's not easy. But while we are doing this, I know most of us, we have what is called the anticipatory anxiety. Am I going to catch it? If I catch it, am I going to infect my wife? Am I going to infect my children? What's going to happen? Things like this will happen. Don't let us be paralyzed with this anxiety. Don't let us be paralyzed with this anticipatory anxiety. <clears throat> As a Christian, we should, um, oh, I know our pastor is here and uh, I, think he is here. They, uh, they, I think it's religions that Paul was saying, don't be anxious about anything. That's I can't quote it very well, but uh, I know you quote it you very well. Good. You are doing good, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> another thing is that I want to encourage you that when you are done, when you get to the feeling of helplessness, when you get to the feeling of hopelessness, and at the end, when you get to that feeling of worthlessness, please do seek help because that's the recipe for disaster because people do dangerous things and, and the process. When they think they're hopeless, they're worthless, nothing good is going to happen to them. That's when the suicide feelings start coming. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to give you courage. Uh, don't be ashamed in seeking help. The shame is not seeking help and then um, letting your family go through a traumatic episode. I wish you seek help as soon as possible. Uh, the healthcare professional is there. Don't be ashamed in seeking help for anxiety. Don't be ashamed in seeking help for depression. I know the African American community is, uh, they see it as being weak when you seek help for anxiety, depression, and all those things. But it is, um, the weakness will be you not seeking help and then your family going through uh, severe tumbling situation. And look at the, the stigma you might left with your, uh, your children with. So I encourage you, seek help. God will be with you. God will protect you and uh, peace will be uh, with you. As this has started, it will go one day. Amen. Uh, thank you. Amen. 
Amen. Uh, um, before I let Pastor take us to church, Pastor, you're going to take us to church for <laughs> another five minutes. <laughs> also. But, but before then, you, you know, I was saying this, and I think it was last week that I, I was telling my social media community, I said, this stay at home has made me to appreciate more. I've always appreciated, I mean, I always appreciate them, but I'm appreciating them more are the teachers. Teaching my kids by myself is not fun. So I'm so thankful to the teachers out there. If you're a teacher out there, yes. you are also one of the heroes of this period. We cannot thank you enough because some of them are actually still coming on video with our children and teaching them um, remotely and leveraging on technology to continue to impart these kids. It's a big work. It's a, I mean, Teaching the kids without losing your mind is not easy. I've almost lost my mind when I have to say something twice and you're not getting it. Um, so teachers, kudos to you. We appreciate, we love you. I would say that um, I'll let my father in the Lord uh, take us to church on how we can go through this while still leaving our faith intact. Because... I have to be honest with you, I'm one of those uh, people that believe that sometimes we should never, uh, faith does not deny facts, um, even though we are, we are not caught to live just on the fact, uh, we are caught to live by faith. Uh, but it doesn't deny fact. And But a lot of people in a time like this, uh, truly um, their faith start to shake. So I just want to turn it over to you, sir. For, for anybody who is watching and going through this period with, you know, struggle in their faith, wondering, does it God really there? Is he really, is he really listening to this? Uh, what would you have to say to them as a word of encouragement, sir? Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to say that um, uh, we should not forsake the community of believers because the Bible says that iron sharpened iron. Mm -hmm. Let us beckon on one another to encourage one another and let us seek for help when we need it. Uh, I will also say that you need to listen more in times like this. Uh, sometimes whenever God wants to talk to the children of Israel, he will drive them to a point where they will have no other option other than to look up unto him. And I believe now that there is a lockdown all over the place. We can't go anywhere again. You are there with your families. Uh, you have no option other than to look up to God in a time like this and hear what God will want to say to you. Uh, no matter the problem you are passing through, I want to assure you that you have an advocate, that is Jesus Christ. We are not alone in this trouble. Uh, God makes us to understand that whenever we are going through pain, He is in the same pain with us. He created us. He knows what we are going through and is there to encourage us. I want to let you know that the harder the struggle, the more the pain we are going through, the greater and more glorious will be our triumph at the end of the day, if we don't give up. And I want to encourage you today, don't give up your faith in God. You may lose everything, the most precious thing in your life that will carry you through, even after coronavirus. Is your faith in God. Uh, if you feel like giving up, just know how far you have come into God. Look at the things God has done in the past. If he has done those things for you, you have scaled all those orders of life in the past. You will scale this order Amen. and you will come out triumphantly in Jesus' name. Let me read Psalm 55 verse 22 unto us. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. It will never let the righteous to be forsaken. You cannot be forsaken. You may think you are alone, but God knows what you are going through. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes in life, the best things comes from the worst situations. Uh, things may look worse as if there is no light at the end of the tunnel. But I want to let you know that Philippians 1, 6 says, and I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you, who had been with you since the beginning of your life, will surely stay with you until we see the end of coronavirus 
Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I want you to look up to God, look up to the church community, make sure you don't isolate yourself. Just know that no matter what happens, days will soon be over and you will sing a new song of joy Amen. and you will be triumphant. I want to assure you, no matter what you have lost in this season, Job lost everything. He lost love of family. He lost his businesses. Uh, the financial empire collapsed. Everything he had, that was a world that surrounded him, gave way. The only thing that was left with him was God. But when God made the storm to go over, at the end of it all, God doubled what he had lost before. And I'm sure by our faith in God, and trust and dependency on the Almighty God that whatever you have lost in this season, maybe in the stock market, maybe you have lost your job, maybe your business is not even doing well, and maybe you don't even know at the end of the month of April where the bills will be paid from. I want to assure you that the creator of the heavens and the earth is there and he will not put you to shame. Let's look up unto him. The saints of old, the people that have gone before us, the Bible says that they looked up unto God in their days of trouble. Their faces became radiant and they were never put to shame. You will not be put to shame in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And, and, and without anything to add to that um, exhortation, I just want to request, if you don't mind, sir, just lead us in prayers and um, um, help us especially to remember um, those that are out there um, trying to help people and add value to their lives, uh, maybe talking of the professionals, and then also those that are home and wondering if um, they're going to be able to make it after now. I just want you to lead us in prayer as we bring this to a close. Sir. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this awesome moment. Thank you, Lord, for the information that have gone out to your people. Uh, but, Father, we thank you because you are the Alpha and the Omega. And so we commit everyone listening to us into your hands. Whatever is the need of individuals, be it spiritual, physical, financial, emotional, Father, we ask, oh God, you will meet them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we commit into your hands, oh God, those who cannot stay at home like we are doing, those who are the front line of this battle, nurses, doctors, uh, techs, paramedical staffs, pharmacists, everyone in the medical profession, even in the administration in hospitals, Lord, we commit them into your hands for keeping. Mm. Father, keep them. Amen. Father, we ask, oh God, that the blood of Jesus will sanitize them when they come in the morning. Amen. During the course of their job in hospitals and in clinics, Father, you will sanitize them. Amen. Father, as they go home, they will not carry any casualty back home to their families in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, they are going out and they are coming in and they are staying on their job. Lord, you will protect them day and night in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we ask, oh God, that Lord, even for those who do not know you, who are in the medical profession, Lord, you will use this opportunity to let them know that you are the author of their faith. Amen. Father, you will draw them closer unto you in the name of Jesus. And for Amen. those who know you, who pray day and night, they will not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everlasting Father, we pray that Lord God Almighty, for the sake of the saints, for the sake of those who profess faith in Christ Jesus, cut short the number of days of coronavirus in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we also pray for our president. We use him as a point of contact, uh, President Trump and all the leaders in the United States. We use them as a point of contact for all other leaders all over the world. Father, Lord, the wisdom they need in a time like this, Father, give unto them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everlasting Father, we pray, oh God, that you will have mercy on the nation of America and the nations of the world. Amen. The Lord God Almighty, at the end of this coronavirus problem, Father, the world will know you better. Amen. Father, Amen. you will show forth your mighty power amongst us. Amen. Even, Lord, the economy that we are afraid of, Lord, the economists are already forecasting. But the Bible says that a day in your presence is like a thousand years elsewhere. 
Amen. Father, we ask, oh God, Lord, in a short time, oh God, you will revive the economy for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We we'll give you all the glory and we commit Amen. everyone, Lord, for a keeping into your hands. Amen. Father, keep us all Amen. and glorify yourself in our lives. Amen. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, Lord. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Dr. Fama Kinwa, Dr. Chuko, and Pastor Antonio Dugua, God bless you. And uh, thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. God bless thank you. you. All right. Okay. Thank you for watching our Ignite Sermon. Be sure to share this video with friends and family. Check us out on our social media for more information about our church. Be blessed.